It's like making sausage. Making music is a lot like making sausage. You enjoy it more if you don't know what goes into it. That's it. The songwriting process. I don't have, I wish I could tell you about the songwriting process. It feels a lot like living my life and then trying to make sense of it. And that's basically all it is for me. Um, I live long enough to have a question and then I try to answer it in three and a half minutes, you know, and, and uh, or I try to take a snapshot of something that I think is special. Um, and it's a turn of phrase. And now more and more, now the songs have become more about my friends and the things that are important to them. And I write little songs for friends and give them to them. And I don't have any intention of releasing them into the, you know, I just, I, I it's, it's so strange. My, my journey with music, you know, my misunderstanding of music in my 20s uh, to the relationship I have with it now is so totally different, you know. Um, I, I felt like um, in my early 20s, I wanted, I wanted to have music do what I wanted it to do for me, you know, be the engine of, for my, you know, retarded little ego fantasy and uh and now i realize that it's it's a you know at 44 a lot of music has become a spiritual partner you know it's something that that i i beg forgiveness uh to every day because i'm probably not um diligent enough and um but it doesn't it's not lost on me now i'm just grateful i'm just grateful to still be a part of it you know really lucky to still be a part of it it's everything i mean i you know uh it's it's the i, I recently it was a sticky handprint on a wall in my house that my daughter left when she was three and unfortunately that handprint derailed us from moving to another house i was gonna move and then i saw the handprint and i was like we're not moving we're not leaving, you know, and, and it's that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like I said, you know, uh, my mother came to our house uh, when she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and, and got my kids to shave her head. And because she, because it was funny and she was right. It is, it is funny. And, and that was, she set the tone of how we were going to deal with, with her situation. And that became a song or, or, uh, you know, the simple turn of phrase of some drunk guy in a bar m mispronouncing his lyrics or m mispronouncing it, what he meant to say. And, and it, you know, I wrote it down on a bar napkin. I, I wish I could say I was really disciplined in the way that I write. And, and I know people that, like, every week they set up their appointments and they go and they diligently write great songs. And I'm, I'm in awe of that. I don't, I don't. I don't possess that uh, discipline. Um, I, I just kind of, like I said, I just sort of meander my way through it. And, and, and the songs become, that's why I have a hard time writing songs for other people, because it's always about something personal to me. And I don't feel like, you know, handing that off. And I was like, oh, you know, I'd rather just ride around and sing my little songs until nobody wants to hear me do it anymore. No, the the handprint song is about is a, a whole nother song about her. It's hard not to write songs about her all the time because she has powers and they reside in her little dimples and I have no disciplinary role in her life at all. I just do whatever she says and usually I'm wearing pink sparkle fingernail polish and you know, it's my wife laughs at me too because I'm 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 a pushover. Whatever she can't get mom to do, she just comes and gets me, and I'll do it. Um, but the the song "Walk with You" was I wrote before she was born, and uh, my friend Joe Rice asked me to to uh, write a song for his daughter. Uh, he was preparing for her, her wedding, and um, I was anticipating Tiller's arrival, my, my daughter, and uh, it, Maya and I sat down, and I I, I said, hey. And this is how songs happen. I said, hey, I've got a, a song project someone asked me to do, and it'll be, you know, it won't be for public consumption. It'll, it's just a favor for a friend. It'll be a good warm-up for us before we start really writing. And 
Um, I kind of told her she had this chord progression, I had the idea, and then this song kind of showed up. And it was right at the end of the song when we realized, or when I kind of realized, you know, the the, uh, the the turn at the end of the song where there's, you know, it keeps on, keeps going to the next generation. I hadn't thought of that. And it just sort of all, it landed on us. And it was one of those things where you feel really blessed to be in the right place at the right time. And, and, and I say this all the time with songwriting, it, it's a lot like giving credit to the lightning rod for the lightning. You know, as much as I'd, I'd like to tell you that I'm, I'm that clever, I mean, sometimes songs come through you and they were meant to be like the way they are and it has nothing to do with you. I mean, I, I, I truly believe that. Um, I, I just think you, I think sometimes you become the steward of a song for a, for a short period of time and then someone else becomes the steward of that song and, and, and you, hear, you see it happen all the time and, and the really great songs sort of get handed down and handed down and replayed and replayed and, and I think that's, that's part of, of what happens and I was, we were blessed in that day to write that song. You know, it's, I, it's one of my favorite moments with Maya for sure. We argued all afternoon. <laughs>